Hi, I'm Chess, and you're watching Chess's Crazy Creations. For today's project, I purchased a template. It's just a basically ready to paint template. You can do anything to the front side of it, but today what I'm actually gonna do is flip it around and utilize the back side of it. I've protected my surface and I have gloves on my hands for this next step. Now you all know I'm a huge fan of Folk Art Home Decor Wood Tint and it comes in the color Walnut or Oak and it comes in this beautiful gray. It also comes in a white and then it also comes in this cascade. And for today's project, I'm gonna be using the Folk Art Home Decor Wood Tint in the color Cascade. So I'm gonna start by giving it a good shake. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get started painting it. So I'm just gonna dip my brush in and start painting on the Cascade. Now, one of the reasons I like this is so much is that it is a water-based product. So it goes on nice and easy, and then it dries up, or it, cl it cleans, I'm sorry, it cleans out of your brushes nice and easy. Um, so you just paint it on, and um, sometimes what I like to do is paint it on and then you can wipe off the excess. Kind of depends upon the look you're going for. Um, you can also add more layers if you want it to be a darker color. But I'll continue painting this and then we're gonna let it dry completely. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here it is all painted and I will just give it a moment to soak. But as I said, you could take something and kind of wipe off the excess if you like. You can give it more coats, but we're gonna let this dry completely. Before moving on, I'm just gonna go ahead and touch up any spots that I might have missed, and then we'll let it dry completely. So here's a quick look about wiping it off. So if you see, it's darker here, and if I start wiping off the excess that hasn't soaked in yet, it removes some of the color and I end up with more of a wood tint again. See, so we've just tinted that wood a little bit blue, but we're keeping that natural tone. So you can either let it soak in and leave it dark or you can wipe it off and give it more of that wood tint effect. While this is drying, we're gonna work on what's gonna go inside. For this next step, you can use a variety of things. So maybe you have old phone books or newspapers. Another idea is junk mail or letters. Maybe you want to use cards and love notes. Maybe you wanna use an old magazine and take something from inside here. So lots of options, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. So I had some things change with my blog and I needed to get new business cards, but look at all these. I don't wanna just throw them away. So we're gonna be using these today, but again, you could use anything else you like. So the first thing you need to do is make a template, which I've already done a little bit of. So I took a card and you can make whatever shape you want, but I'm going for a leaf effect. So I am creating a leaf shape on the card like this. And then I cut it out with my scissors. And again, you could make hearts, you could make a lot of different shapes if you want. Now they don't have to be perfect, but you would like them to be maybe a little bit close to the same for what we're gonna be doing. So here's the initial leaf shape. Um, for what I'm creating today, I will want to fold it in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold in half. Now you could do this first, and then you could cut it if you'd like. So you're cutting it halfway instead. So that would be another choice. So then your sides are very even and equal. So if you wanna see what that looks like, 
Let's get another one here. And I would go ahead and fold this in half, like so. And then I take my template, fold it in half, place it here, and then I trace the line like so, and then I cut it. And already I could tell I didn't fold that last one very straight, so let me go ahead and fix that right now. And then you just go ahead and cut it from edge to edge however you want to make that shape. So now I have it so it's already done and both sides are equal. So whether you cut it first and then fold it or fold it and cut it, that choice is up to you. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. So I need several of these to move forward. Now that I've got them all made, let's talk about if you wanna treat them or not. Now these are coded cards, so I'm gonna leave them as is. Depending upon what you're using and depending upon where you're putting it, you may wanna treat the outside. So one option would be to coat them with Mod Podge. You would just simply dip your paintbrush in, paint them, they would go on white, dry, clear, and I would recommend doing both sides. The other option is laying them on a like a protective surface like wax paper, and then you would spray them with Mod Podge Ultra, and that would seal them too, and let them dry, and then flip them over and repeat. So that would be a good way to seal them depending upon where you're putting them. Now we need to assemble the cards in sets of two. So I'm gonna open the card up a little bit and I am trying to balance a little bit of the front and the back of the old cards. So I think I'm gonna go like this for the first one. And all I'm gonna do is add a little hot glue here and then squeeze it together and let it dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of them in sets of two. Now that they're all hot glued, we wanna line them up. So I'm gonna remove these out here for a second. And sometimes the best ways to line them up is, you know, going from the top to the bottom and then maybe getting your sides in like so. Something like that. And then, you know, you're going to shape them up. So I'm going to go ahead and shape them up and then I'll talk about what we're doing next. So I've got them all laid out and now it's time to glue them into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a hot glue dab and then lay one set of cards down. Now what's important here, we're aiming for 3D here a little bit, and I've made the top of the leaves on top all the way around. So it's under, over, under, over, under, over. So that's just a tip if you're doing this. So again, I'm just gonna add a dab of hot glue and place that in place and I'm gonna continue going all the way around and doing this. So I will just continue adding more glue and getting them into place as I go around. Sometimes it takes a little bit of adjusting, backing up a little bit. So keep going. The under over thing can be a little tricky if you're working with um, stiff paper, which like this is cardstock, so it's a little more stiff, but I still appreciate um, that it is easy to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going all the way around, gluing all this into place, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here it is so far, and there's a lot of things you can do to it. You could change this outside color if you want, maybe white to make this pop more, you can also make some shiplap lines before you put the cards on or after, depending upon what goal and what you're looking for in your artwork. So let me go do some finishing touches and I'll show you what it looks like. I just felt like I was wanting to add a little more dimension. So I used folk art home decor chalk paint in the color rich black and I painted the outside edge and now I'm going to let that dry. So here's the one I just made with the recycled cards. 
This one I actually made for Home Talk TV, and this is made out of pieces of magazine, and this is the same thing as the other one, just a palette that I flipped around and I'm using the inside for, and I went ahead and stained this with wood tint um, in the color walnut. So the same concept, but looks are different and made with different items. And I hope this inspires you to create some recycled art of your own. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and my blog at chesscrazycreations.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.